Hi folks, this is Donald. Well, I have finally done it. I have succumbed to peer pressure and joined the legions of urban sketchers who own a Lamy Safari fountain pen. Viewers to the channel recently will know that I have been searching out fountain pens as a recent discovery of mine, having got a bit fed up of using fine liners. And the previous one that I was using then packed in, so I went on the search for a new fountain pen. And as much as I don't want to do what everyone else is doing, I was always kind of curious why so many people use the Lamy Safari. So I thought it's nice and cheap. I'll give it a go and see what all the fuss is about. And so I'm doing a sketch here to try it out and this is a scene in the centre of Edinburgh and I'm just trying the central building, leaving out the ones either side. And I've slowed it down so that I can show you some of what I did in this sketch in real time and I'll talk to you about that and what I think about the pen. So this was a two hour sketch, I've speeded up some of it because I know that very few people want to sit here for two hours watching me draw wobbly lines and I had done a very quick pencil sketch to plan out where things would go roughly before I started but I skipped past that because I want to just make this video about the pen so as you can see if you're new here this is my extremely wibbly wobbly sketchy style I pay no attention to rules, perspective or anything like that. Really it's just make things look like they're made of jelly or about to melt. That's my general technique. And the pencil lines that I'd put in were roughly just to give me an idea of where the floors would go and to make sure it was all going to fit on the page. But after that I pretty much ignore the pencil lines and just draw in whatever I think looks right, wherever I think it should go. So the Lamy Safari, if you're not familiar with it, if you don't own one, is a very cheap and cheerful plastic fountain pen. It costs about £20, I think it's about the same amount in dollars and it comes in lots of different colours. Obviously I went for yellow because that's the urban sketchy colour and yes it's made of plastic and I discovered that it was originally designed as a fountain pen for children. I think it was released in the 70s or 80s and when it was released it was something that became a huge hit amongst adults because of its iconic design and I got a converter that you put inside it so I could use bottled ink and I put Diatramentis document ink inside it which is waterproof and permanent so you can put paint over the top of it and the other thing I like about the the ink is that it dries really quickly so there's very little chance of smudging and I do tend to smudge ink if it is a slow dryer. I've been aware of these pens for quite a while and I really quite enjoyed drawing with it. I found it a little bit scratchy at times. I didn't wash it out first before I started using it. This is something I learned afterwards that you're supposed to wash out the top part of a fountain pen when it's new to get rid of any residue that's inside it from the manufacturing process. I did wash it out after I'd done this sketch and then had another quick scribble about with it and it was flowing much smoother. So that's a good tip if you ever buy this pen or any other pen do remember to wash out the tip first in a little bit of warm water and then I left it outside in the sun to dry for an hour or so just to make sure that it was fully dry and ready to go and then it was much better. And overall I was quite happy with the pen, I think it's really good value, it's good build quality, obviously it's plastic so it's not going to feel as nice as a more expensive pen but I think for the money you're spending I can see why so many people use them and I will look forward to doing more sketches with this pen in future. Now that I've finished the first main stage with the pen, I will move on to painting the wobbly building in watercolour. I'm using my usual Van Gogh watercolours and it is a size 6 
watercolour brush that came with this paint set. Van Gogh paints often come with a little paintbrush and so I've just continued using it. I think it's really good. It's got a nice point to it and the first colour I'm using is turquoise green. Now you might notice that the building is not turquoise green, not even remotely, but I thought the building was a bit dull so I figured let's have a bit of fun with this and paint colours that have really nothing to do with reality of the scene. And I'm going slow and steady. I am trying to fill in all the gaps in between the bricks that I've drawn around all of the windows and I haven't got much water on the brush it's reasonably dry plenty of pigment but not much water because I want to try and keep it within lines and not having splodging all over the place which is so often the case when I try to do watercolour it just becomes a bit of a mess so I really wanted to concentrate on this part and try and fill in all the gaps without making a complete mess and so this is essentially just like colouring in I'm not really using the paints in a paint type way this is more like colouring in with marker pens in the way that I would typically use those. The advantage of using paint though is that if you want to cover larger areas you can do so without it drying out because I usually use India ink markers and the downside of those is that India ink does dry very quickly and if you don't lay it down fast enough over large areas you do tend to get streaks and it creates a finish that's not quite as nice as it could be Whereas watercolour just gives you a bit more leeway, a bit more time to get the paint down and moved around before it dries. I really liked the way that the paint was separating out all the windows because before that everything just kind of looked conjoined. There was no contrast between the windows and the building itself that they are on. So this was great for just creating contrast and the colours were making it look fun and childlike in a way. And that's what I was aiming for with this. I didn't want it to be serious. I didn't want it to look like it was drawn by a grown up, I suppose. I wanted it to be cheerful and happy and full of life. And that's the spirit that I'd like to approach my sketches and quite fitting really that I was drawing with a Lamy Safari for this one because it started out life as a children's pen and then has become a pen that is synonymous with grown-ups doing sketching and art with it over the years. And I think that's great because we are now grown-ups doing something that can be approached with the spirit of a child because that's something I've talked about in the past. When children do art, they don't overthink it, they don't overanalyze what they're doing, they just get on with painting and drawing and being creative. I actually remember there was a conversation I had with a child years ago. I used to be a primary school teacher and in my teacher training years I was in one school in a nursery or what Americans would call kindergarten and I remember there was a child drawing and painting a picture of what looked to me to be a spaceman on the moon and I complimented her on her spaceman and she burst into giggles because it turns out that she was attempting to draw a cow and what was fascinating in that scenario when I think back about it was that she was laughing at me for m misunderstanding her picture there was no sense whatsoever of her thinking oh my goodness I've done this artwork wrong people are not understanding it I've made a big mistake this is terrible this is the end of the world she'd done what she was happy with and I was the one who was in the wrong and what a brilliant spirit to have that's something that we do not do as adults when we grow up we stop doing that we start over analyzing our work and we start comparing it to other people and if it's not perfect, we get frustrated. And there you go, you've got a child who just got on with it.
And then look what I did there at the top. I made a terrible mistake of putting green in the chimney pots. I don't know why I did that. I just thought it would look quite good matching the main part of the building. It did not work at all. It looks like aliens have landed on the building. But fear not, I did find a way to fix it. As I usually do when I make mistakes, there's almost always a way to fix it. And so you'll see at the end of the picture that the green has vanished using my magical indie ink marker pens, which is what I am using now. These are Faber-Castell. I used to call them Faber-Castell, but it turns out it's Faber. I'll have to try and remember that. Pit Artist Brush Pens is what these are called, and they come in either firm tips or soft brush tips. These are filled with India ink, which is permanent, light fast and waterproof. And so I started with the black and I've gone and coloured in all of the window panes to make them very contrasty. I think the technique gives the building real depth. And so this is a bit more of a mixed media sketch, which is my normal approach when I use watercolour rather than just an out and out watercolour. And I find this part is much more effective for creating the contrast that watercolour can't really provide the same level of oomph in that respect. So after the black I put in the cold grey 6 around the edges of the windows, that just gives them contrast and depth. and then used a cold grey 4 in the soft brush again to add some more details around the rooftops and the drain pipes, just adding into random bricks and tiles. And here was the bit I fixed with the chimney pots, just tried to make those darker grey. Then I went over the drain pipe again just to make that a bit more contrasty and bring it forward. And then I used a Signo white gel pen to separate out the chimney pots because they'd all merged together when I coloured them in grey. So just adding the white gel pen over a few lines here and there just separates them out again, makes them separate objects. And all in all, I thought, given that I'm not a watercolour expert and nor do I claim to be, I thought that was quite a fun outcome for this one. And if you would like to see more sketching inspiration like this, you can click on this video right here and I will see you in the next one.